All right, fantastic, and welcome back to FinTech Insider. And I am sat now with a, a couple of people who have been uh, making some, some pretty good waves over the last couple of days. And, uh, and Ralph, you made a pretty, uh, pretty big splash on the main stage, uh, kind of uh, yesterday it was. Feels like a long time ago now. But, yes, uh, exactly. So Ralph Hammers, CEO of ING. Um, tell us, for the guys who uh, weren't here and uh, didn't get to see your talk, tell us a little bit more about uh, your sort of messages and what you've been up to in ING. Well, the message yesterday on stage was really that if you want to win going forward as a bank um, in this world uh, that changes so quickly and it is increasingly digital, that first you have to be purpose driven because that makes sure that you have direction and it makes sure that you stay true to what it is that you want to achieve. Secondly, uh, the message is that you know everything you do should be digital and mobile first. Um, and then Thirdly, uh, given the fact that it's not products that make the difference, but the experience as to how to get to the products that makes a difference, uh, that basically made my story. If you take those three elements, then quickly, given the fact that people spend more and more time, and also corporate spend more and more time in more digital uh, worlds than in the physical worlds meeting each other, you have to make sure that you are either connected to some of those platforms that are out there, or you have to become a platform yourself. And if you want to be a platform yourself, and you want to be a credible one in the financial uh, world, you have to be open, which basically means you have to be open for more consumers and producers to join your platform. You have to be open to have third parties on that platform. And you have to be open for competitors to be on your platform as well. Yep. And I think that's that was the core message. And that's hard, like, you know, that requires a, a very different level of sort of emotional intelligence about you know being a bank and not doing everything yourselves but being open to working with partners kind of in a way that banking hasn't traditionally done so you know I know you guys have got a, a very good reputation for the ways in which you've implemented agile within ING but how have you made that happen because that's not something that happens overnight right no clearly you know if you want to stay ahead in this world uh, uh, what we need is an, uh, an innovation culture right so uh, from that perspective, we're blessed, given the fact that we know through ING Direct, we really know how it works. And uh, we really know and understand that you shouldn't look at technology and see what it can do to the bank. You have to look at technology and, and think, what kind of bank do I need to build for that technology, right? And uh, so you have to change your business model. For example, if people do their banking on the go, on their smartphone, you should not give them the option uh, uh, of five different savings accounts because they don't have time to make that decision. Yeah. Um, so there's those kind of things that you need to recognize and marry in order to be successful uh, going forward. Now in order to make sure that internally you deliver on that, you need an agile culture. Yeah. So basically we moved away from a hierarchical organization with marketing and products and operations and IT next to each other in silos, but we turned it around, we flipped it around becoming completely agile with squads and chapters and tribes and basically running two pizza teams, squads, with all these specialists in there and, and running on a two-week two sprint basis to see how you do changes incrementally and also to allow these initiatives to fail and fail fast. And only that way you can continuously improve and stay ahead, um, making mistakes but learning from those mistakes uh, but staying on top of, uh, of the changes that are going on. Otherwise, you will, you will be stuck in those mega programs that most of these banks have, <laughs> that every three months there's a release, and then you try uh, this release and you, uh, you test it over the weekend, and basically on Sunday morning you find out that it doesn't work, and you have to wait for another three months for the, for the release that is basically fixing these bugs. So we have, every two weeks we have releases. Yeah. It's, a, it's amazing and, uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, good speakers, but I've heard a lot of people reference your purpose-driven piece, um, you know, talking to people who have seen, you know, Wozniak and various different people sort of talk. I think the purpose piece really resonates because it's about, this isn't about a feature race. This isn't an arms race about who's doing what. It's about the yardstick of what good looks like. Um, and that, uh, you know, I think that's a, a, a great point. And probably this is a, a great point to, to, to bring you in as well. So, and I, I guess as, as continuing the theme, as you say, Ralph, about sort of the partnerships and that ecosystem. So um, tell us a little bit more about the, the sort of relationship, because I know this is something that you talked about on stage and, uh, you know, definitely 
something I see as a, a great way of evidencing the fact that you're doing it. Yeah, so, so in the UK we run a marketplace for business lending, which means that small businesses come to us and we source alternative finance from challenger banks, online lenders and a whole range of providers. Uh, we're actually beginning in the UK to explore partnerships with banks. And actually our area of the market is exactly where banks just start thinking about marketplaces because um, bank, you know, bank lending is not suitable for every small business. Um, uh, that's, that's not a bad thing, right? Some, some businesses have specialist needs, they have particular sectors, they may have really urgent needs for good or bad reasons. So for a whole host of reasons, small businesses aren't always suitable for bank lending. So if you're going to look at actually extending to a marketplace, then small business lending is a good place to start. So we're really excited to be announcing that we're going to be expanding into the Netherlands and we're going to be doing that in, in partnership with ING, uh, which was the announcement that came out. And uh, something big excitement for us, you know, we've, we've been going really quickly in the UK uh, and we've, beginning to be, we've been starting to think about international ambitions because the problem we solve with SME lending is, is a global one, uh, you know, every, every, every major economy. So, well, and, it, and it's one that fundamentally can change the face of countries, right? You know, if you can materially give people cash flow at the point where it's most needed within an SME space, you're talking about shifting how the GDP of a country can work, which is, you know, that's fundamentally what good banking is. Yes. And also about capital allocation as well. You know, it's not about how much capital you deploy. It's about deploying capital at the margins of the high growth businesses, the successful ones. And they're not, not always the ones that are best supported by bank lending. And of course, there are situations where you have bank lending plus uh, alternative lending, so for example, you might have a long-term facility with your bank, you might have a near-term working capital uh, need because you just landed big contracts. So they are complementary things and, and actually I think they have a real force multiplier, particularly at the high growth scale-up area of the market. Uh, and that credit allocation is a really important problem. So, so is SME going to be a strong focus for ING over the next couple of years? It is. You know, if you take our literal purpose, uh, it says we have to empower people to stay a step ahead in life and in business. And then if, if you want to make sure that people stay a step ahead in business, that's where generally SME comes in. And um, we are, we originated most of our challenger initiatives from the savings side in the different countries. Uh, but given the fact that you, that you basically fund yourself through savings money in a specific country, you also owe it to that economy to replenish it into that economy. Now clearly, if it comes to mortgages and some consumer lending, and certainly also the top corporate lending, you know, it's, it's almost the similar skills from market to market that you can use. But for the SME business, it often is much more a locally geared um, market that you need to understand, that's one. And secondly, we all know that in the SME business, to the extent you can do it as a bank, there is always a limit from a bank's perspective as to what you can do. And that's where the collaboration comes in. And again here, you know, it's all about the client and the client experience for us. Uh, if the client is supported, but not coming from our balance sheet, but the client is supported, it's great. It's great for the client, it's great for funding options, it's great for us because we have basically supported this client. Yes, completely agree. Well, thanks very much for joining us. Uh, before you go, I have to mention the trainers because I'm super impressed with the yeah. trainers. <laughs> like, I guess- Sorry about my shoes. Yeah, in, uh, in, in Holland, it must be, I guess, easier than everywhere else to get orange shoes, but like, I'm super, like, I hope you guys are getting these, but, uh, <laughs> but um, thanks very much for joining us anyway, guys, on FinTech Insider. Okay. Thank you very much.